Okay, so today I'm going to make sulfuric acid from copper sulfate and electricity. My source of electricity is one of those wall adapters. So what I did is I exposed the two wires. Um, so there's copper exposed, so it makes good contact. But you can't just use the copper wire because at the anode it will um, dissolve the copper back and make your starting product again, copper sulfate, instead of making uh, sulfuric acid. So what I did, I just um, taped on um, some graphite electrodes that I got from carbon zinc batteries. Um, you can get those batteries quite cheap, uh, but um, those carbon electrodes aren't ideal because uh, they erode quite quickly. Um, so it's better to use like MMO or platinum, but that's really expensive. So I just tape on those electrodes to the copper wire. Um, make sure you know which one is the anode and which one is the cathode because the graphite electrode needs to go onto the anode and if you don't do that it will fuck up. So <laughs> um, make sure you got that right. And if you're uh, done it should look a little bit like this. I weighed about 250 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Um, you can use any amount because it will just take longer if you use more, but you also get more sulfuric acid. I dissolved the copper sulfate in about 150 milliliters of water. After all of the copper sulfate has dissolved, I tape both of the electrodes uh, to the side of the beaker so they're hanging almost completely in the, in the solution. So now if you let the current flow through the solution, you can see bubbling at the anode. You just need to let it run until there's no more blue color left. This can take anywhere up to a few days to a few hours. It all depends on uh, what your source of current is. In my case it took only one and a half days until there was little to no blue color left. So it's a few uh, hours later and as you can see a lot of graphite powder uh, has turned the solution black. Okay, um, the electrodes are completely gone and there's still some blue left so I am going to filter this and run it again until there's pretty much no blue left. Before I filter the solution I just wanted to test the pH to see if we actually obtained some sulfuric acid and as you can see uh, that is the case, we, we did actually create sulfuric acid so that's a very good sign. So now I just filter the solution. As you can see there's still some blue left. That's not really a problem because I won't be using the sulfuric acid. But if you're using the sulfuric acid I would recommend just um, electrolyzing the solution for a little bit longer until it's perfectly crystal clear. So you will get um, very very pure sulfuric acid that way. So after waiting way too long for it to filter we can finally now um, go to the most exciting step and that's to concentrate the acid by boiling it until white smoky vapors appear. So I obtained about 5 milliliters of sulfuric acid from this method. My sulfuric acid is kind of black because um, some precipitate formed and I wanted to filter it. But I'm kind of dumb and I filter it to normal filter paper with which um, yeah, discolored the sulfuric acid because it was eating through it. So I tested the pH again. As you can see it's cherry red so it's a very good sign. It's quite concentrated. This time to test if the sulfuric acid is concentrated I wanted to see if it, how fast it dissolves um, cellulose and in th this case my source of cellulose is just toilet paper. So yeah let's see. As you can see the sulfuric acid turned it black and ate right through it. So it must be quite concentrated. The sulfuric acid was actually good enough t for nitrations um, because I tested that but I couldn't film it because I was getting uh, cramps in my stomach and it hurt quite a lot because I ate too much or something. So uh, I will do that in another video but uh, yeah it is strong enough to do nitrations that's pretty awesome. Anyway I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there will be more coming soon so uh, stay tuned. Goodbye.